He will provide. All you got to lean on me. He will provide. 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 Amen. Y'all like y'all know him in here. Y'all like you know him in here today. Yeah, like you've been through something, yeah. and God showed up. Yeah. I, I'm seeing in the spirit yeah. that some of you have been he in a red sea provide. in your life, like the children of Israel. He will he couldn't go backwards. Could you fail on your tail with his army? You couldn't he go forward because you're overwhelmed with troubles and trials of life. But God said to Moses, <laughs> God spoke to Moses. He said, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> That's so awesome. He said, be still. See, sometimes you got to get into a quiet place. We just be still. People hear his voice speaking to you. He will provide. And God will speak a word just what you need to hear at your moment of despair. He will speak a word. He'll bring comfort. He'll give you strength. He even brings healing. That's how good he is. He says, when you're still, I can do my perfect work in the quietness. Sometimes you're so bombarded with all the noise. But I thank God for King Jehoshaphat reminding me that, Lord, when famine, when sword, yes. pestilence, all these issues arise against us, that come, we come to this house. We come to this house because we know in this house your presence dwells. So you get a revelation that when I'm in a quiet place, your house is right here. This is your house he's talking about. Your house right here. Yes. When you get into your house and you shut out the noise, turn off the telephone, turn off the TV, turn off computers, turn off the radio, just, do, just get in a quiet place. God will show up in that place. He will show up right where you are and give you a rhema word. That's a spoken word from the heart of God that you need to hear hot off the press. Hot off the press, that's what God will do. Give you a word, and that word will be just what you need to give you a message of hope that I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Yes. I feel like giving up. I feel like all hell breaking loose in my life. My children is, is messed up. My finances is jacked up. I, I don't know what to do. But when I get to that place, I tell God, God, remember my afflictions. I need you, God, yes. to remember the stuff I'm going through for your name's sake. Ain't that something? We suffer for his name's sake. And he says, when you suffer with me, you're going to reign with me. That's the word. And when I get in that place where I hear God speaking, I don't care about nobody else. I don't care how folks look at me. I don't care how they talk about me. I don't care about none of that mess no more. Because I know when I get in my secret closet, oh, God, God, yeah, shut out of my heart. When I get in my secret closet, there's an intimacy with me and God. When God pours into me, I can pour into him. And something changes in my heart. And the ocean begins to burst open in me where the rivers of joy, whoo, glory to God, flows out of me. Oh, my God. Amen, amen. I'm going to stop that right now. I got to get more. I got to keep going. Time winding up. Got to get going. Hallelujah. Going back to Second Chronicles, as Pastor started last week, 
And she stands for the reference to the word, reference to the word. I, 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 this, this message, it's been in my heart for the last two, three weeks. Second Chronicles chapter 20. It, it came in a dream. In a dream, God spoke to me. And said, you need not to fight this battle. As I mentioned before, my parents... They're in a, in a devastating situation financially. And everyone's calling me. What should I do? What can you tell us to do? And I said, Ma, all I know is depend on Jesus. And the Lord said, I spoke to you in a dream. Now tell them. So I, I went into group checks and text all my family and friends. And I said, read 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Because God had a, has an answer for the issues you're dealing with right now. When Pastor had me read this last Sunday, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 9, it said, If, when evil comes upon us, as the sword, the judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and cry unto thee in our afflictions, then thou wilt hear and help. Y'all catch that? You know what he's talking about? Your heart posture. When your heart posture is in a position where attacks are coming from every side it may look like I'm surrounded, oh my God. But I found out in my secret closet, Prophet April, that God says it may look like I'm surrounded by the enemy, but you're really surrounded by me as a fortress. Woo, that blew my mind. God says I will build up a standard. Let me read one more verse. Says, and now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Verse 11, behold, I say now, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. Verse 12, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither we, it said, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. You may be seated. If I was to have a subject, it would be, it's time to praise against your enemies. Praise against your enemies. Because he says here that the children of Ammon, Moab, joy when they came out of Egypt. But you know what the issue was? The reason why they didn't? The mindset. They weren't ready mentally to overpower these other armies. They could have very well taken them. They're the great company of people. But their minds went in position. So now they're crying out to God, God, are you going to judge our enemies? Are, are you going to do something about this? How many times the bill collector can ring your, bill, your phone? Bill collector ring your phone. And you're you, you, you like, man, I know I need, need to pay this bill, but I really don't have the money to do it. But they keep bugging me. So you call them back, you make an agreement that, okay, on such and such date, I plan to make a down payment on this bill so I can eliminate this bill, right? We all done it. It's getting practical. And the money still don't come. Then what you do? Lord, you said I can trust you. You said I can depend on you that even when my bank account's on zero, Lord God, and and, and I don't know how I'm going to pay my car note, my mortgage on my house. My, my parents are facing all this right now. And, 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 and you're like, God, I, I know you. You called me to be your vessel. And, Lord, I'm facing a dilemma right now to where I don't know what to do with all these enemies. 
Debt is an enemy. Did you know that? That's your enemy. Because they want to take everything you got to pay towards debts. So you can't do anything else but focus on debts. That devil is a lie. Because what I did, I took all my debt. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. How to face the enemy of debt. And God says, take a little bit like the ant. I always remind me of something in the Bible. It's an ant. It's a little creature who gathers in the summer for the winter. He said, take note of the ant. Something so minute. And God says, as you pay attention to the details of something that little, I will teach you how to manage your money to pay your debt. I don't know where that's coming from today. I don't want any of my message today. It was not in my message. And God says, just like the children of Israel crying out to God, oh God, without judge them, will you take care of my enemy for me? That's what they pretty much saying and crying out. So I went on further, verse 14. It says, then Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeel, and the son of Mataniah, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Don't catch that. Came the Spirit of the Lord. And that's something. In the midst of the congregation. Do I got your attention now? That's what God was saying. Do I got your attention now? Because now the Spirit of the Lord has showed up. And he said, hear he said, hearken ye, all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of the great multitude, for the battle is not. Amen. I'm see if you're paying attention. But who? That's right. Or God's. Tomorrow. Now, here, here's the advancing of the kingdom. <laughs> I, I was reading this, and God said, now this is time to advance the kingdom. Because he said, just because I have some invading forces coming against me in my health, coming against my mindset, coming against my family, coming against my marriage, coming against my children, coming against my business, coming against everything I have, these opposing forces. So the Lord sent his spirit in the midst of the congregation. God's spirit in this place today. I don't know if y'all felt it, but God's presence is here. His spirit is here. And the spirit of the Lord said, hearken. In other words, listen. God got something to say to you. So let's go a little further. He says, the battle is not yours, but God's. So now he says, now it's time to advance the kingdom by trusting God's ability by leadership of the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow, he didn't, he didn't wait, no, waste no time. He didn't, he didn't waste a minute or a second. He gave a straight, straight, divine word from God that on tomorrow. Go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliffs of Ziz. And ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Never position yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Oh, you, oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That is so awesome. I don't know if y'all paying attention to that. That just got me stirred up, just that part alone. Because he said, I ain't got to fight some battles. We fight battles God ain't give you instruction to fight. We fight folk that God said, why are you arguing and trying to debate with this certain person? You know you can't change their mind. They're not going to read with you. So why you keep trying to plead your case to somebody who ain't listening? So we do it all the time. And God says, if you learn how to just shut up sometimes, the Holy Spirit himself will speak for you. That's what God will do. The Holy Spirit who lives where in our hearts. He says, set yourself, position yourself. Get into the right place where I command you to go where you can just shut out the noise. 
That's why I said get in the quiet place. And he says, stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord. Going a little further, Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and heavens of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites, the children of the Korahites, and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Were they quiet? They weren't quiet. They said they came into agreement. They set themselves in a position to be obedient to the command of God's word that the Spirit of the Lord came and spoke to them to let them know it's already done. It's already done. The battle's already been fought. The victory's already been won. It is already done. The deal has been sealed. All you got to do is walk in the victory, trust in God's provision, trust in the word. And I tell you, when you read further on, you, I'm going to let y'all read that letter yourself. But read the rest of that story. You're going to find out, just like Jehoshaphat, he bowed down, his face to the ground. He got into his heart posture of worship to seek the face of God. And he says he bowed down and all the heavens of Judah fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That is so powerful. You know what he's talking about? My worship is a weapon against the enemy. The enemy hates when I worship. I'm a worshiper. I love to worship. The enemy hates it. Uh, Brother Willie, I know he's probably watching. The enemy hates your worship. He, he thinks the cancer going to kill you, but the devil's a lie. Because God said, when you worship me, I got to do a miracle. See, y'all don't realize when I get into a position of worship, I release the heavens to open up to release the promise that God has for me to heal, deliver, and set me free because the worship invokes God to move. Oh, glory to God. God says when you begin to get in a position where I command you to come before me and lay down before me and worship me, he said, that's when the angels of heaven say, okay, God, your child is crying over here. God, your child needs some money over here. God, your child needs to embrace him over here. God, your child going through depression needs to be lifted up. God, you know, your child is going through a storm now, but you are the storm chaser. You are God who brings peace in the midst of a storm. And I tell you, God, that everything they need is all about you. God, because they're seeking your face. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Oh, my God. I looked up Jehiel. His name means God's God, the living one. And I said, God, you couldn't have picked a better person to bear your name. And as he began to go forth, it began to tell you all the generations that became before him, but because it's a relational thing. So when I get a revelation of sometimes I need to have a positive relationship with people in my life who go in the same direction. Y'all hear that? Because some people who say they're for you, they're really your backstabbers. Some people who says, I'm going to help you accomplish your vision, they're right there to assassinate it. Because they're planted agents by the enemy to strategically assassinate your purpose and the plan God has for you in this house. And when God began to speak to me all week long, he was speaking, he said, the enemy attacks you so hard because they're anointing upon your life. He said, but as you continue to stay in a place of worship, he said, the worship, it assassinates the enemy where he got to back off from you and leave you alone. You know how to get your children back? You get into worship. When your child strayed away from the Lord, and you know they were raised up in church, and they don't come to church no more, start worshiping. You start worshiping. And you start calling their names out in worship. God, I thank you for King Charles today. I thank you for Crystal Emerson God. I thank you, oh God, for my, my nephew, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for my grandchildren. I thank you, Lord, for calling their names. And when I call their names in worship, oh, my God. I invoke God to move. He said, he that has to hear them hear what the Spirit says to the church. God said, I will hear, I will answer, I will move by my Spirit to deliver your child in the time they need you the most. That's how powerful God is. 
we put ourselves in predicaments that God didn't put, put us there. We cry out for some burdens that we put on our shoulders God didn't even put there. And we try to figure out, okay, God, why am I so depressed? Or who you been hanging around? Why am I have this lustful spirit on me today? God, who, who you been hanging with? Because people have spirits that are in them. Unclean spirit, the word calls it. And the unclean spirits, when you come around, it says, you know what? I'm going to latch on to her because she seems vulnerable today. So I'm going to attack her from the spirit in me and cause her to feel miserable. But God said, the devil's a lie. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. So anyone connects with me, they connect with the great I am who dwells in me through the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And therefore, when God begins to speak, I hear his voice speaking. God, what is it today? Oh, I want you to go over there to that side of the town. Who you going to meet this person in the store? They don't know you're coming, but I'm going let to you, let you get there because I'm going to speak while you get there. God does the most crazy stuff sometimes, and it blows our minds. All because of the willingness to, oh God, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. And when I get to that place, I say, God, here I am. It may look like it's all over. It looks like I'm going down for the last stroke of the hour. It looks like I'm never going to rise anymore. It looks like you do miracles, God, signs and wonders. You never lost the battle. And God, I thank you. Just like God told them, when you position yourself before your enemies, you're going to find out. I already took care of your enemies. When you looking for the enemy, God already sent confusion among the enemy, and the enemies begin to destroy themselves, and the ones that remain begin to kill each other. Ain't that something? God says the enemy sometimes you try to fight is not your enemy. You know where your real enemy is? Yourself. We become an enemy to God. Every time I hear God speaking, I don't obey him. Every time God is trying to provoke me to get to a place of consecration and worship and fasting, seeking his face, I put myself in position to become an enemy to God because I rebel. Rebellion is an enemy. Stubbornness is an enemy. Pride is an enemy. Selfishness is an enemy. Unforgiveness is an enemy. Hatred is an enemy. Bitterness is an enemy. And you wonder why these things are attached to you. You got to check the bloodline. Sometimes things are generational that attach to you that affects your bloodline right now and your children's generation after you because the enemy knows if I can attack you, I can keep you from walking in your full potential. I thank God he called me out of darkness to the marvelous light. I thank God he put his spirit in me to preach his word. I thank God because the revelation he puts in my heart sometimes, I'm like, God, where did that come from? But it'd be so powerful. Even little bitty phrases God will speak. He can tell you something like, Prophet April, go out there and throw a rock in the street. It's like, what am I doing that for? If I want to show you that just by your obedience, I'm the rock that's being hurled into the street to slow down the, the rough dry riders down the street who's coming down your block. God do stuff that just don't make some sense sometimes. I remember a story when an axe head fell in the water and they were cutting some trees. Elijah the prophet and his, and his servant, they were cutting and the axe head fell in the water. He said, where is it? Go bring me the stick. He took the stick of the axe head stuck it in the water and it reconnect itself the way God ordained it to be which showed me the grace of God that sometimes I become like an axe head so hard and stubborn and God said I'll let you get to the right place at the right moment where I can reconnect you. <laughs> Glory to God. And when God began to show me the magnitude of his grace he says all you gotta do is just worship. He said, when you worship me, your praise become a weapon against the enemy. 
Because praise invokes God to say, okay, God, now it's time to rise from your throne. So rise to your rest and be blessed in this place. And God will rise up from his throne. He will hear your despairing cry. He will come into a place where you are, begin to fill you in your heart with joy, unspeakable, full of glory. He'll cause everything to try to hold you down in captivity to loose his grip off of you. He'll cause the shackles to fall off, the chains to fall off. He'll cause everything to try to hold you bound where you can't lift your head up in depression. He said, I got to lift it off your shoulders because he destroys the yokes. He removes the burdens. That's how powerful he is. God said, there's nothing. Nothing too hard for me. Nothing. If you trust me, you say you trust me. He said, then come. I'm going to test you. All right, Satan, go and test him. God will give the enemy permission to, set, to, to test your loyalty, your integrity, your character. See, do you really trust me? You don't believe it? Keep on living. Because some things are going to happen in your life and you're like, God, why this? Have, why they have, like, I fixed this over here and that broke. God, I lost my job over here. Try to get another and they reject me. God, why this stuff keep, like a, like a bad cycle. But the more I try to rise up, something comes and knocks me right back down on my knees. And God says, well, I'm trying to get you to the first place. On the knees. Trying to get you on your knees. You're trying to do things your way. But it says when you get down on your knees, you begin to hear my voice speaking to you. See, the Spirit of God begins to compel you to come to the fountains of living waters. It will call you out of a dry season and begin to pour into you the rivers of life. It will cause you to have an overflow in your belly. You get so excited, I got to go tell somebody what God has done for me. So many times I've been in a storm and didn't think I'm going to get out of it. But God showed up in the nick of time. He dried the tears from my eyes. He lifted me up from the pit of despair. I almost slipped and God caught me before I hit the ground. He promised me he got angels watching over me all day and all night. We got angels on our side who are right there watching over us. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. When you call on Jesus, something got to happen. Mountains got to move. When you call on Jesus, every battle you've been trying to fight, God says be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we get burdened down and we wonder where is God. I cried all night long and I heard the voice of Jesus say, come to me all your labor and heavy laden I will give you rest unto your soul I know the pain you've been going through I know how challenging it's been in your life I come to tell you today you got a savior who knows all about you you got a savior who cares all about you he said if you trust me I'll tie your midnight in today I'll take your sorrow and give you joy. I'll take confusion and give you peace. He said, if you trust in me, I'll tell you everything that's trying to hurt you. Cause it'll work out for the good. All you got to do is trust me. Depend on my holy word. I come to tell you today. Sometimes you got to pray them by yourself. Sometimes you got to get in a room by yourself. You got to turn off everything, move every distraction out the way. You got to move out of my way. Bye-bye depression. Bye-bye heartaches and pains. Bye-bye disappointments. Bye-bye discouragements. Bye-bye anxiety. Bye-bye diabetes. Bye-bye, bye-bye cancer. Bye-bye everything trying to hurt me. You got to speak to your situation. You got to speak to your situation. 
You got to speak to your situation. I don't know y'all hear me today. You got to speak to your situation. You got to tell it what God says. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I might have went down in the valley, but now he promised me he would be the glory and the lift of my head. Cast down, but I'm not forsaken. I might have been cast down, but I'm not forsaken. I might have been going through heartaches and pains, but he never turned his back on me. I might be in a pitfall of despair, but he promised to be right there to lift me up again. He said, rise up in the power of the Lord. Rise up in the strength of our God. Rise up in the glory of God. When you rise up, he said the glory, the glory will come in. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory, he shall come in. When you begin to praise him like you lost your mind, you begin to praise him. It's I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how I feel right now. I don't care. I'm going to praise him. Because he's living everything. Let everything, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. I come to praise you, God. I come to worship you, God. I come to magnify you, God. I come to lift you up, Jesus. Ooh. Glory to God. All glory to God. All glory to God. All glory to God. Hallelujah. All glory to God. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. God, we get excited when your presence show up. God, we worship you. Because we found out, oh God, that's the key to the storm chaser to worship you, God. I come to bow down to say you're my God. I come to bow down to let go of any anxiety and stress. I come to bow down before your throne to worship God. Because I found out when I worship you. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. If you worship him, he'll turn it around. Your child might be locked up right now. He'll turn it around. God says, you might have affliction in your body. He'll turn it around. God says, whatever it is, you worship me. I'll turn it around. I'll cause it to work out for your good. Just because you worship me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this word, God. It will not fall upon deaf ears, but you command us to have ears to hear. If we say we love you, we say we're following you, oh God. You command us to love the Lord thy God with all our hearts, our soul, our minds, and our strength. Today, God, ask that this word convict all of our hearts to get into the place of God of worship, to get into that secret place, oh God, where it's you and I, God, alone. For you're God alone, oh God. You spoke things to existence, God. And things manifest. You're the same God today. Yesterday and forever, God. Now manifest your power, God. Manifest your power, God. In all of our lives. 
that we will see you at work in our lives. Even though we look like it, we're not going to make it. But the battle is yours, God. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to do me a favor. Everyone in this room, if you can stand, stand, you want to stay seated, it doesn't matter. Just get into a place right now where you're willing to hear God's voice speaking to you. Because this is a season of manifestation. And God is manifesting his word like never before. When we find ourselves being attacked so hard, ask God why. He'll speak to you. I'm a living witness. But I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I thank you for your loving kindness, your strength and weakness. I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for the times I turned a deaf ear to your voice. I'm inviting you to speak to me, God. Speak to me, God, by your spirit. Come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sins, known and unknown, and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for forgiving me, for caring about me, and giving me another chance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Holly, you may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord God. I pray that it encourages you today. That stirs you up in your spirit to get into your word. Seek the face of God. Because you've got to live by the word of God and not bread alone. Because we, get, we gravitate to so much stuff in this life that are damaging to our spirits. And we have to be careful who you associate with. You have to be careful. Because spirits are real. And they're searching for a prey. I, I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. But God is in my spirit right now. But I want to encourage you. Ask God to show me who I've been attached to that has an unclean spirit. Y'all hear that? Show me who I've been attached to that has an unclean spirit that I can detach myself from it. If they're not willing to repent and get right with the Lord, don't argue and fight with them. Don't do that. That's not Jesus' character. Pray for them. He said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully misuse you and say all men are evil against you falsely. Watch God bring conviction in their hearts to leave you alone themselves. They used to have a lot of friends. Only got one or two now. They're still close to me. Because I refuse to allow my spirit to be violated by unclean spirits. Especially as a leader, we have to be careful as leaders and guard our hearts because the enemy is looking for the opportune time to come and seize your authority. He wants your authority. We have authority over the enemy, but we don't use it. I charge you today, read 2 Chronicles chapter 20 this week. Read it. Meditate on it. Study it. Watch God speak to you from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 
And many of you are, are need this word that God has in the word. God will speak something to you that will help change the way you think about yourself. We are all self-enemies that destruct ourselves by the way we think. And God says, when you get in the word, the word exposes because it's light. Light exposes darkness. And the darkness cannot put out the light. Only light puts out darkness. And who is the light? Jesus. He is that light. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise in this place. For he is worthy.